bake a cherry pie, Billy boy, Billy boy. Did she bake a cherry pie? Charming Billy. She can bake a cherry pie, quick as a cat can wink her eye. She's a young thing and, and cannot be her mother. <laughs> Granny, did you pick out your spot yet for the garden? Yep. I kind of favor a patch right close here to the house. Yeah, oh, I'll plow you up something there directly. Yeah, just enough for some onions and taters and some Rudy Bakers. And a few rows of corn. Paul? Good morning, Granny. Um, Paul, can I help you with the plowing and the spading? Well, Ellie, I'd rather you put on one of them pretty dresses that Miss Hathaway got you. But, Paul, I can plow better than these clothes. <laughs> plow them. You know, Ellie, I'd like you to wear one of them dresses kind of regular. Wouldn't you, Granny? You're mighty fetching in a dress, Ellie. Better than a tub of fresh churned butter. Paul, if I go to wearing them dresses, Jethro will make fun of me. I reckon he hadn't better. Now, you run along and put on some with skirts. All right, but he hadn't better make fun. He won't, he won't. You know, speaking of Jethro, I think he's got himself a sweetheart. The banker's secretary? That's right. They was out together last night. What'd they do? Well, I don't rightly know for sure, but it was something to do with bowls. All you do with bowls is eat. Well, I reckon that's what it was then. She said she was going to take him bowling. <laughs> you know, Jed, I kind of like that, Miss Hathaway. Yeah, I think she kind of likes us, too. All those marvelous plants. Those simple, rugged mountain people. The more I see of them, the more I am impressed. Yes, now Never I... Never have I observed such strength of body, mind, and character. Yes, now I... They stand like bowls <laughs> in the pebble-strewn landscape of Beverly Hills. Like mighty oaks among bushes. Like... Like quiet. <laughs> now, like I admire them, too. But those boulders need polishing, and we've got to put some city leaves on those oaks before my wife gets back from Boston. Incidentally, in any endeavor requiring physical strength, they are most exceptional. I took you up for a bowling last night. Here's the bill. Three thousand dollars. <laughs> How many games did you bowl? Well, you see, what happened was this. I said to Jethro, pick up that bowling ball, she says, and see, can you knock over them pins down yonder? They's just sticks. Anyway, I snatches up that rascal draws back and lets her fly. Did you knock down them pins? Yeah. The pins, the pin boy, the end of the building, a brick wall, and a signboard down on Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> uh, I bet you Miss Jane didn't do that good. Well, she didn't even try. But she just looks at me and says, Jethro, you're strong as an ox. And twice as handsome. Ain't no two ways about it, Granny. That city girl is sweet on this boy. I reckon so, the way she's bragging on his looks. <laughs> you are handsomer than an ox. <laughs> Thank you, Granny. Cousin Ellie, you're a city girl now, do you, you think... You see that, Paul? I told you this would happen if I took to wearing these dresses. <laughs> you call me that again, and I'll turn you every way but loose. You <laughs> say nothing but city, gal. <laughs> up from there or you're going across my knee. And just so you're going across mine. What did I do that was so all fired bad? In that dress, she looks just like a city gal. You did it! I can be better go out there and see she don't hurt him. <laughs> City, you've got to learn to use the steps. <laughs> I'll be happy to know that I'm making splendid progress with Ellie Mae. She's turning into quite a lady. Come on. It is Jed, Granny, and Jethro we've got to work on. Clothes, manners, the works. What have you done about servants? That's the problem, Chief. They're basically opposed to the whole idea of able-bodied people letting others do their work for them. Well, that's a refreshing attitude. But we've got to get a skeleton staff in there somehow. A combination butler and ballot with Jed and Jethro to help them assemble a wardrobe, teach them how to... Ravenswood. Your butler? Oh, he's never been my butler. Came with my wife like an overweight dowry. Been in her family for years. 
And with Margaret in Boston, I can certainly spare him, plus her upstairs girl, Marie. I doubt if you can sell Mr. Clapper on the idea of servants. Get him on the phone. I'll make him think he's doing me a favor by taking him off my hands for a while. Right, Chief. She hadn't ought to throw me down on my head like that. What if I'd have been carrying a frog in my hat? Suppose you're wearing your hat in the house. Well, Granny, where's a fella gonna carry a frog? They jump out of your pocket. <laughs> Hello? Oh, howdy there, Mr. Drysdale. Glad to have you back from Boston. Your missus come with you? Oh, that's too bad. I know her and Granny hit it off like two sows in a mud waller. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I'm, I'm sure they would. No recipes? No, no, my wife doesn't do much cooking. No, I, I doubt if she ever made grits and hog jowls. <laughs> well, how about uh, mustard greens and possum belly? <laughs> No food, then. Uh, pone and squirrel shank? Hmm. Boiled chicken home. Well, <laughs> say, she don't do much cooking, does she? No. Well, the reason I called Mr. Clavin is I have a butler. Well, he really belongs to my wife's family, but he's been with us ever since we were married. And I was wondering if you'd let him come and stay with you for a while. You mean board with us? Well, I guess you could call it that. Who's going to board with us? Uh, just a minute. Uh, some kin of Miss Drysdale named Butler. Oh, <laughs> uh, why we be just... That's that no good fat rascal that wouldn't let Ellie and me in to help Miss Drysdale when she was sober now. <laughs> Hello? Uh, Granny was talking at me, but she's done now. Oh, no, she ain't. Just a minute. <laughs> Granny, let me hear the man out, and then we can talk it over. Yes, sir, Mr. Drysdale, I'm a listener now. Well, in addition to Ravenswood, uh, he's the butler... You can also have my wife's upstairs girl, Marie. Margaret may be away for some time, and I have absolutely no use for him. Well, uh, I sure would like to oblige. Uh, me and Granny will talk it over, and I'll call you. Oh, thank you. You'll be doing me a great favor. Well, I was glad to help out when I can. Thank you again, Mr. Clampett, and goodbye. <laughs> Is somebody coming to live with us, Uncle Jed? Maybe, Jethro, uh, maybe. Why don't you, uh, go out and make up with your cousin Ellie? Okay, Uncle Jed. All right, Jed. Let's have it. We gonna board that butler fella? Well, uh, Mr. Drysdale will take it mighty kindly if we did. He says he ain't got no use for him. I don't like him myself. <laughs> you only met him once? Once was enough. I asked him real nice. I said, are you a doing for Miss Drysdale that she's feeling poorly? Are you doing the washing and the scrubbing and the cleaning for her? And he looks right down his nose at me and says, Madam, I am a butler. <laughs> I reckon he is proud of his name. Kind of fancy. Ravenswood Butler. I don't care if it's Stonewall Jackson. <laughs> and I think Mr. Drysdale has a lot of gall to ask us to take his wife's kinfolks off his hands. Well, now, I'm mighty beholden to him. You know, he's keeping my $25 million in his bank, and he ain't charging me one penny to do it. Well, that is business. You didn't ask him to do it. Well, now, Granny, if it was just Mr. Butler, I might agree with you, but there's a sad side to the story, too. What's that? Well, you've heard of Mr. Drysdale speak of his stepson. That's his wife's boy by her first marriage. The one they call Sonny? Yeah. Well, it seems she's got a girl, too, and there must be something wrong with her. What? I don't know, but they keep her upstairs. No. Yeah. He spoke of her as my wife's upstairs girl. Oh, the poor thing. Her name's Marie, and he'd like us to take her and Mr. Butler. Don't gone it, Jed. We got enough to do to take care of this big place without... He didn't say what was ailing her, huh? Well, no, but if you ask me, they ain't eating right over there. No. You know what Mr. Drysdale told me? Why? His wife ain't never cut grits and hog jowl. Ah, <laughs> oh, go on. That's a fact. Nor mustard greens and possum belly. Nor pone and squirrel shank. Nor even boiled chicken hog. <laughs> Land of mercy. You can't hardly blame Mr. Butler for getting a mite cranky. Man don't eat right, he gets that way. <laughs> I reckon it won't do no harm to take him in for a spell. Granny, for such a little woman, you got an awful big heart. 
Well, I feel sorry for the poor girl. But the first time that fancy pants Mr. Butler looks down his nose at me, I'm going to chuck him in the cement pot. <laughs> I'm doubling your salaries, the length of time you stay at the Clampett home. But if one word of this gets back to my wife in Boston, you're both out of work with no references. Actually, you will find the Clampets to be basically fine people. All they need is a little polish. Polish? They need sandblasting. <laughs> However, I think Miss Hathaway's plan may overcome their initial resentment of wearing city clothes. Yes, I, I think I have devised rather a clever strategy. To put it briefly and succinctly, my strategy is as follows. I shall propose to the Clampets that they sit for a family portrait. As you know, my hobby is painting. <laughs> now, I shall suggest to the Clampets that their attire match their background, which is, of course, their beautiful mansion. They will no doubt see the logic of my didactic approach, accede to my wishes, don suitable raiment, and once they have seen themselves thus attired, take... We're in. Let's go. <laughs> We forgot to dust the stair rail. I'll do it, Granny. <laughs> right. Wearing boys' clothes does come in handy sometimes. All right, Ginger Granny, I think we got a roll spick and span for the company. They ain't a speck of dirt, no place. Can I go swimming now? Me too. As soon as we help Granny clean up the kitchen. Was that music again? <laughs> you ever find out where that comes from? No, I'm Granny. Every single time I commence to looking for it, somebody comes to the door. <laughs> Nobody to the door now? There will be. You'll see. <laughs> mm, doggies, that's nice. <laughs> How long for Jim can we find it? You're wasting your time. I'm a telling you. Before you can find it, somebody will come to the door. <laughs> there, you see? Happens every time. I remember, Ravenswood. I'm counting on you. Don't fail me. You have my word, sir. I've been butler and ballot since boyhood, as was my father before me and his father before him. And I've yet to meet the man or woman who posed a social problem too difficult for me to handle. That's the spirit. Howdy there. Remember me, Mr. Butler? No! <laughs> Ravenswood, come back! You gave your word! Come back, you coward! Come back here! I'll cut off your French benefit! <laughs> Ravenswood probably forgot something. He'll return shortly. Meanwhile, this is Marie, the Strysdale's upstairs girl. Marie, the J.D. Clappett. Howdy. Jethro Bodine. Ellie Mae Clampett and Grandma Clampett. No, ma'am. I am a Moses. Pardon? Granny's related on my wife's side. They's the Moses family from Tennessee. Then your name is Granny Moses? Grandma Moses. That's right. <laughs> there was a very famous Grandma Moses who painted primitives. I've whitewashed a few myself. <laughs> I'll show Marie to her room. <laughs> Listen, Marie, honey. Over here, you've got the run of the house. You don't have to hide upstate. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that girl, but want some good cooking will cure her. She's half starved. Poor thing is so weak, her knees keep some buckling on her. <laughs> She's kind of pretty, though, for a skinny girl. Just wait till she gets some mess of Granny's grits and hog gel. That'll fill her out. Well, I'll get some of cooking. Guess that butler fellow will be coming back directly. Oh, and Granny, can we have some of that salted down possum belly that Ma sent us? Well, I reckon it is kind of a company meal. <laughs> Granny, open up a jar of them pickled crow gizzards. Now, Jeff, we don't want to sport police folks. They might get to thinking we eat like that every day. <laughs> hey, me, will you do something nice for me? I sure, Paul. Well, you go get into that pretty dress again. Oh, Paul, Jethro will make fun of me. 
No, I won't, Ellen May. Cross my heart. Why, uh... That's my darling. Thank you. And then, you be real nice to Marie. She's had a bad life. I'll be nice to her. She's pretty. Let's all be nice. <laughs> I wanted to go swimming. Now I gotta go put on an old dress. Cousin Allie, you look awful pretty in a dress. Honest you do. Do I look pretty in that there city girl? You look prettier in that there city girl. That did it? Come on and fight. Now, Allie, <laughs> come on, Allie. Come on, Allie. Come on, Allie. <laughs> There's nothing to be afraid of, Raymond. The fact that they're big and strong doesn't mean they're violent. Elephants can be gentle. <laughs> now, believe this one. Your appearances deceive you. Oh, barely. Oh, I do admit on the surface they do seem a bit rough, even cruel. But I assure you, underneath, they are placid, kindly, and gentle. You see? You shouldn't have called me a teacher. Leave me alone, please. Leave me alone, please. Mr. Butler, don't never say anything nice to that girl. She'll kill you. I found her granny when Mr. Drysdale said he didn't have no use for Mr. Butler. He sure wasn't fooling. I just seen him cut through the brush chasing him with a stick. If Mr. Butler gets sassy with me, I'll chase him with more than a stick. Dad, Ellie throwed me down on my head again. If she don't stop that, I'm going to get a headache. Stop riling her, Jethro. But golly, all I said was she's pretty. That ain't no call to bust a fellow's head. How's the door? Oh, howdy, Marie. Hi, Marie. Are you hungry, darling? No, madam. I'm whopping up something here to just set your mouth to watering. Put some strength in your limbs, too. <laughs> Tell them what it is, Granny. A great big mess of grits and hog jowls. And salted down possum belly. Gold pickled crow gizzards. How do you like that? <laughs> Don't tell me that child ain't hungry. Why, she's ready to drop in her trash. <laughs> Set her at the table and I'll dish up a mess. No, please. I only came in to bring you a message from Miss Hathaway. She's preparing to paint the family portrait. And she wishes to know if you all will sit for her. May I tell her that you will sit for her? Well, yeah, I reckon we'll do that. Yeah. Well, let's get at it. He wouldn't allow it. What business is it of his? That's what I said. And she says, he's a butler. And I'm just an upstairs girl. And I got to do whatever he says. <laughs> we'll see about this. Oh, Denise. Let's hit Mr. Drysdale, find him, and give him a whooping. I'll oh, kiss him, Granny. Oh, Ellie, you go put a dress on like you promised. <laughs> Uncle Jed, I'm going swimming. If I see him, I'll fetch him in. Don't go jumping in with your clothes on again. Well, I won't, Uncle Jeb. Miss Hathaway, she gave me a present last night. She says it's something special for her to go swimming in. What'd she give you? Oh, uh, pair of trunks. Uh, you go swimming in a seaman pond. Boy, it's too big to go swimming in a trunk. Ed? In a pair of I got a feeling that Mr. Butler feller is gonna be trouble. Yeah, we can handle him. Well... I still say that I think Mr. Drysdale has a lot of nerve to ask us to board his wife's relations. Maybe he's just fed up. Man can get awful tired of having his wife's kin underfoot all the time. <laughs> he told me that butler fella had been living with him ever since they was married. 
I declare some in-laws latch on to free room and board like leeches. It takes a mule kick to jar them loose. You can't hardly blame Mr. Drysdale for trying to get shed of a critter like that. Is that the way you feel? You bet it is. I'll see how fast I can get packed. <laughs> Get out from underfoot just as quick as I can. <laughs> no, Jeff. I know when I'm not wanted. It don't take no mule kick to get shed of me. <laughs> Granny, well, I wasn't talking about you. We couldn't get along without you. No, Jeff. I'm just a burdensome old woman. No good to nobody. Why don't you throw me down the well? <laughs> You gonna whip me, Granny? No, Jethro. I'm gonna get thrown down the well. <laughs> Why don't you throw us both down the well together? <laughs> but it's no good leeching for <laughs> Mr. Butler, I'm sorry Jethro got a mite rough with you. He don't mean no harm. He's just an overgrown boy. Now, we all mighty pleasure to have you come and stay with us, and as uh, long as you behave yourself, won't be no trouble. Oh, uh, I'm Jed Clamp. Uh, sir. Is your granny? <laughs> I reckon you and Jethro done met. Yeah. Well, sir. <laughs> oh, and this here is my daughter, Ellie Mae. When Chante Mademoiselle who say très belle, très charmant, très ravissant. Don't you dare use them kind of words to a lady. What do you say, Granny? I ain't sure, but it sounded dirty. <laughs> if your daughter was pretty and charming, oh, you're so different from all the others. You're like a beautiful city girl. <laughs> he had not have said that. <laughs> oh, Marie, we miss Jane. Did you say the Clavers had agreed to sit for their portrait? Me? They said they would do it. I, I believe it to be self-preservation, madam. <laughs> no! <laughs> Don't take to the stairs, she'll catch you sure. <laughs> Everything seems to be fine. You see, Ravenswood, didn't I tell you the Clampets were kindly, gentle people? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> hmm, we're gonna have to feed up both of them, Granny. His knees is buckling, too. <laughs> Shoes off. Y'all come back now. Here.